Watch some of the finest young carters in the country. It's VXR Racing Driver of the Year, only an hour to wait. Before that, it's time to join Steve Ryder for the British Touring Car highlights from Brands Hatch. Putting you behind the wheel. High Q sponsors the VTCC. It's 50 years of the British Touring Car Championship, 50 years of quite thrilling action. And now here at Brands Hatch, new talent is lining up alongside the established stars to try to make sure that 2008 is at least the equal of the previous 50 years and is maybe even better than that amazing battle for the title that we had in 2007. It's the title, Decider, and Giovinardi ahead of Plato, round the outside. Neil waved him past. Plato's giving it everything he's got here. He has to get past Giovinardi. Fabrizio Giovinardi has won the British Touring Car Championship. It came down to the very last race, and it came Fabrizio's way. I think it's the biggest season that they've passed in my life. Fabrizio Giovinardi is the 32nd driver to join the championship elite, who will put his name among the touring car greats in 2008. It's Alan Manu, multiple winner. Great championship win, Jason Plato. Ivan Muller's finally, finally done it. James Thompson takes his second title. Back-to-back -to -back titles for Matt Neal. Fabrizio celebrating his British touring car title win. Fabrizio Giovanardi won the Drivers' Championship by just three points last year. He's back to defend his title over the next seven months as we visit nine circuits around Britain, starting at Brands Hatch in Kent for the opening three races in this HIQ British Touring Car Championship. As ever in the new season, there are changes to the cars and the driver lineups, and there's an addition to our presentation lineup as well. JD Oberobi joins us, and she's got all the details on who's racing what for the 2008 season. 15 teams, 25 drivers, and a major decision from one of our leading manufacturers with Seat switching to a diesel run car, and all with the same goal trying to catch this man. Reigning champion Fabrizio Giovinardi stays with VX Racing and hopes to emulate his new teammate's record of back-to-back -back titles. Matt Neal is looking to regain the trophy he lost to Giovinardi last year, and they'll be joined by Tom Onslow-Cole, who has switched from Team RAC for his second year in the championship. The Sayat Sport UK team has a new sponsor and new diesel engines. Last year's runner-up Jason Plato hasn't won the championship since 2001. Could this be his year? The long shot is to win. Uh, that's why we're all here. That said, we've got a lot to learn in, in a very short space of time. They're our new diesel package. Darren Turner also stays with Sayat. This season, uh, hopefully uh, less dramas for me and uh, a bit more luck. Hopefully if I can stay out of trouble this year, then uh, expectations could be a bit higher than last year. Sayat's the first manufactured back team to race a diesel in this series. At Team Halfords, Gordon Shedden's become a team leader and he's very confident. Our Team Halfords Honda Civic's gone through a, a bit of an evolution over the winter, which is great. And uh, you know, hopefully we'll be right up the front challenging for, for race wins. He's joined by a very happy Tom Chilton, who's swapped with Matt Neal. Team Halfords is, is the best team I've been with so far. The car's pushing all the right buttons for me and uh, as far as I can see, it's another piece to the Chilton puzzle. If there's any year I should win, it's this year. Team Halfords could once again be a major title contender. Team RAC have the current independent driver's champion Colin Turkington on board once again, but this year he's going for outright honours and is positive his BMW can win more races. The expectations are very high. This is the second year with the BMW, and uh, you know, I feel very confident in the car more times I drive it, so... Uh, we're definitely aiming for the title this year. 
Stephen Jelly joins the team after finishing third in a competitive year of British F3. I've got to learn, uh, learn fast and uh, win races. Uh, that's the aim, that's why I'm here. The team believe they can win the championship outright and have the drivers to do it. Top rookie last year was Matt Jackson. He won the final race of last season and he's been setting the pace in testing for BMW Dealer Team UK. Another potential future star is 18-year-old Andrew Jordan, who joins his father's John Guestback team in his debut year in touring cars. I'm hoping to learn as much as possible from, from Dad. He's got a huge experience, probably one of the most experienced guys in the championship, so I'm going to just try and learn and enjoy it at the same time. The trusty Honda Integras could still win races this year. Motorbase performance is back for a second year in British touring cars with the experienced Rob Collard leading the way. His rookie teammate Stephen Kane finished third in the Porsche Carrera Cup in 2007. I know I'm capable of doing a good job, so there's no reason why we can't be up, hopefully, and with the front guys and fighting. Adam Jones may spring a surprise in his brand new team air cool Seat Leon. Robert Shaw Racing's Matt Allison and Harry Volkard will drive their Chevrolet Lissettes, and the team will also run an Integra for Alan Taylor. At Arcus Racing, Urquhart has been joined by former BMW stalwart Martin Bell and John George returns in his Honda Integra run by TH Motorsport. British truck racing champion Stuart Oliver joins Chris Stockton at BTC Racing. Jason Hughes will be replacing his MG with a Honda very soon. Young Scott Michael Dahl debuts in a family run Integra and finally Team 48's Matthew Gore and Daryl Wilson hope to debut at Rockingham. So the start of the 51st year of the HIQ MSA British Touring Car Championship is virtually upon us. We'll have round one for you next. Welcome back to Brands Hatch, ahead of round one of the HiQ British Touring Car Championship. Your commentary team, former champion Tim Harvey, alongside our commentator Ben Edwards. Matt Jackson lines up on pole position in the BMW. Reigning champion Giovinardi is alongside. Then it's Turkington and Plato on the second row. Onslow Cole and Turner on row three. On row four, Gordon Shedden ahead of Stephen Kane. But watch out for Matt Neal. He's starting all the way down in 10th place with work to do. Go back to row number seven. And Rob Collard lines up alongside Andrew Jordan. Then it's Adam Jones and Chris Stockton. Mike Jordan quite a long way back. He's 17th on the grid. Eckert Gazillimark lines up on row number 10 with Harry Volkard. Stuart Oliver, truck racing champion, lines up on row 11 alongside Jason Hughes. Then it's Alan Taylor and Martin Bell. And at the back of the grid, it's Michael Doyle. Lights go out, away we go, and it's not a good start from Giovinardi. It's a good start from Colin Turkington in the Team RAC BMW. Matt Jackson gets away well from pole, and Jason Plato up into third place already, getting straight past Giovinardi, and those two campaigners from last year are going wheel to wheel immediately. They're side by side, and Giovinardi's trying to get it back. Yeah, Giovinardi's usually a great starter, but he's having to fight it out with his old nemesis Plato from the very first corner, while the two BMWs of Jackson and Turkington streak off into a a gap, a sizable gap on this first lap. One of the cars uh, ended in the gravel half in the gravel there, but got going again. That was Andy Jordan, I think, who uh, lost out. Oh, we've got a spinner towards the back. And uh, I think it's Martin Bell, quite possibly, in the uh, one of the Arcus. No, it's the Eckert in the second of the Arcus cars. And so Eckert Kazilimark has lost it, but he will be able to rejoin. So Matt Jackson made a perfect start from pole position, and he's already opened up a little bit of a gap over Colin Turkington in second, Fabrizio Giovinardi, Jason Plato, with some good battles going on further back. Stephen Kane. Rob Collard in there as well, all trying to get past Matt Neal. Yes, yeah, Stephen Kane and uh, his teammate Rob Collard in the two motor-based BMWs already up behind uh, previous champion Matt Neal, struggling a little bit in this first race with his uh, his new ride in the Vauxhall, but uh, he, can, he, will, he will come through, we know, but he only qualified 10. That's right, so Matt Neal's... Well, Turkington's off from second. Second place, man, off on the grass. That's out of Graham Hill Bend, and that means Giovinardi now will move to second place that's an unusual error from Colin Turkington. That means Giovinardi second, Plato third, Darren Turner fourth. The two diesel Seats there, the yellow and green cars, they're going very well on their debut. Remember, we haven't seen a manufacturer run diesel-powered cars in the British Touring Cars. A privateer did manage it last year, but now they're running up front behind them. We've then got Tom Onslow Cole, and then the two Team Halfords cars. Yeah, well, we didn't see what happened to Turkington, but I suspect he either got his right-hand wheels on the white line or just outbraked himself coming down the hill. 
We've got a replay, I think, coming up. Here we go. We just see the end of it. Oh, there he goes. I think he got his right rear wheel on the wet outside of the track and just lost it. And, of course, on the damp grass, he can't get back on the track quickly enough. Well, that's certainly given Matt Jackson a very useful advantage. 2.9 seconds his lead, and he's got fastest lap as well. What a drive this is turning out to be for the youngster. Giovinardi in second, there he is. Then Plato and Turner in the two Seats. Another Vauxhall then of Tom Onslow Cole. Then the first of the team, Halford Hondas. That's Gordon Shedden. And remember, right behind him, his new teammate for this year, Tom Chilton. He's moved from Vauxhall to join that team. But Stuart Oliver, the truck champion, well, he's in trouble on his first touring car race. Yeah, well, perhaps not uh, not the reliability he'd like for. We hope that the Lexuses would have better reliability this year. They've certainly shown a bit better pace, but uh, Stuart not having the, the debut that he would have liked. So there are the two BMWs of the motor-based team. It's a local-based team, and they were running Seat Toledo's last year, but the big change in the winter, they bought these two BMWs, and they're running up there in the top ten, ninth and tenth at the moment. So Giovinardi still in second. Let's see what happened a moment ago. Uh, Alan Taylor, I think that is. Oh, and he just made contact. That could well have been Martin Bell that he collided with there, but I think both have rejoined. They're both still in this race. Matt Jackson is absolutely wringing the neck of that BMW. He's using every inch of road. It's got some new colours on the car. It's the BMW Dealer Team UK car, sponsored by Accident Exchange. But he's in a single car team as he was last year. But a lot of help with that from the uh, the factory RBM team that run Andy Prio, whose car that was last year. So a really professional effort going on there. He's making the most of it. Let's see what's going on here. Mike Jordan battling with Stephen Jelly. This was up through clearways and Jelly runs wide, gets on the grass, visits the gravel, just about <laughs> manages to keep his foot in and rejoins the fray. We're on board with Jason Plato here. That's Darren Turner, his own teammate. Now listen to this. Just let's just listen a moment to this diesel engine. It's a very quiet engine. You barely hear anything. Absolutely silent. Just a whisper, and very unusual for the drivers to get used to. Not only the sound of it, but the the narrow rev range, the extra weight that the diesel carries on its front axle, and that's turning it off again. Same place. He's gone off for Graham Hill Bend again. Well, I don't know what's going on here for Colin Turkington. That really is a surprise. Maybe there's some sort of problem, but uh, that's twice he's been off now. The Seat's using the extra bit of road on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend. That's not too much of a problem. And Jason Plato still holds on to third. Darren Turner in fourth place. Tom Onslow Cole, an excellent fifth on his debut for Vauxhall. Let's just remind you that for Tom Onslow Cole, it's his first touring car race in a front-wheel drive car. Because last year, he was driving a BMW. Now he's in one of the VXR Vauxhall Vectras that was so strong last season. There's our race leader then, 3.1 seconds ahead now of reigning champion Fabrizio Giovinardi, then Plato, Turner, and then the second of the Vauxhalls, Tom Oslo Cole, then it's Chilton, Shedden, Stephen Kane comes through, then Matt Neal, and the rest of them just beginning to spread out a little bit. Leading independence is the car leading the race outright, that is Matt Jackson. The next independent is that of Stephen Kane, who's currently running eighth in the motorbase car. We're back with Plato, that's how close Turner is and he's actually having a little look up the inside. Careful, boys, don't want to upset things in the first race of the year. Your two teammates, they stick together this year. There was some question mark as to what they could do with the driver lineup at Seat, but it's remained exactly the same, and Plato's having to work hard here to hold on to third. Well, Turner was perhaps the unluckiest man out there last year and didn't get the results he wanted. He wants to start off this year as he means to go on. Look, he's putting Plato under enormous pressure here, and he's clearly the faster car. And talking to pressure, Giovinardi. Yeah, right now with the race leader, Matt Jackson. Here we are, battle. Oh, and they, they hit each other a little bit through Graham Hill Bend, a little bit of contact, and they get away with it. Turner loses out as a result, and in fact could be under pressure from Tom Chilton behind. Meanwhile, battle for the lead here. Here comes Fabrizio Giovinardi on the inside. What a beautiful manoeuvre. Jackson just a bit wide. Giovinardi crossed up sideways and slid through. Absolute class. This man's a joy to watch. He came into this championship two years ago, learned the British series did a brilliant job last year pure pure class and as all of his teammates are finding out there's something a little bit special about Fabrizio Giovinardi that was absolutely stunning and Matt Jackson had nothing he could do about that and it's purely down to the conditions and the way they've changed take a look at it he sets him up he's quicker through the, the preceding corner gets on the inside drags the brake a little bit late just a bit of a drift and perfectly done and Matt Jackson had just made a little mistake on the braking which meant he went in a bit wide so that gave the space look this is the view watch from on board Jackson he he does get into a bit of a slide here, and then there's no way of cutting the cutting into the corner.
Brad Neal up into sixth. Gordon Shedden's in seventh. Tom Onslow Gold has dropped to eighth. Stephen Kane is in ninth place. But this is the closest battle. Look at Tom Chilton and Matt Neal right behind him as well. Nothing to choose. We've got a stay at then the Honda, and then the Vauxhall, they're all absolutely identical for pace. Yeah, and of course, Matt Neal and Chilton have swapped seats. Matt Neal leaving the family-run team. He's had a difficult winter, not poking his nose into the workshop, not talking to his own father about what's going on in the race team, and now he finds himself behind his own, his own car from last year. And they're dealing with uh, cars as well. Colin Turkington was that moving out of the way. Fabrizio Giovinardi still leading, but look at Matt Jackson in the BMW. He's caught right up again. So we've still got a race on here, and Matt Jackson has not given up the prospects of winning the opening encounter of the season. There are certainly some areas on track where it's dried off a bit, where the BMW has the edge. But watch them through clearways. Getting on the power, front wheel drive, Vauxhall up ahead versus rear wheel drive, BMW out of clearways, building up the speed, 125 miles an hour here as they cross the line, hard on the brakes into Paddock Hill Bend, just very briefly, and Giovinardi just manages to maintain that one or two car length gap over Matt Jackson, still can't afford the tiniest mistake here though, and there are still other back markers to pass, so still lots to focus on, just under two laps to go. Yeah, ever so close. Here we go, Matt Neal on Tom Chilton. A typical Matt Neal move that right up the inside. Chilton gets pushed wide onto the greasy stuff, and through goes Shedden and Onzo Cole. Yeah, and maybe even Stephen Kane, because he was right in the group as well. Race leader Giovinardi will be coming around this time to go on to the final lap. Can he do enough to stay in front of Jackson, or will Jackson put in a last-minute lunge? That BMW likes it when it's drier, and it has dried up again in this race. What a race of changing conditions this has been. Cross the line, onto the final lap then. Giovinardi still just with the edge over Jackson. Yeah, not everything to play for on this final lap. Jackson will be trying to just put Giovinardi under pressure, see if he can make a mistake. I doubt very much that will happen, but a great drive by both of these two guys. Good stuff, through the hairpin they come then. There is a car of John George a little ahead of them. You just see the red Honda Integra. Now, this could worry Giovinardi, but they may catch him at a point. Yeah, John George actually getting right out of the way. Good driving that from the experienced racer. He just moves out of the way. The battle for the lead can continue. And it's Giovinardi from Matt Jackson as they come up to the final corner into clearways. No mistakes this time from the reigning champion. And surely Fabrizio Giovinardi is going to win the opening encounter of the 2008 season. Matt Jackson drove beautifully, but it's Fabrizio Giovinardi who wins for Vauxhall. Matt Jackson takes second place in the BMW. I think it's going to be Jason Plato home in third position. Across the line he comes, and at, uh, Darren Turner in fourth, then Matt Neal, good result for Matt Neal, he started in tenth, finished in fifth place ahead of Gordon Shedden and Tom Onslow Cole. Let's just confirm that result then, Giovinardi the winner for VX Racing by just two tenths of a second from Matt Jackson. Jason Plato took third on the diesel debut for Sayat with his teammate Darren Turner right behind. In fifth, Matt Neal, Gordon Shedden finished in sixth in the Team Halfords car ahead of Tom Onslow Cole. Stephen Kane on his debut finished a very creditable eighth ahead of Tom Chilton in ninth and Adam Jones in tenth place. Fabrizio, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, see the steam coming off your head there. Looks like that was a hot race. <laughs> yeah, inside the car was a very hot race. <laughs> well done, thank you. It was a hot race, uh, different condition. We start with the dry. It was very, very strong. I couldn't catch him. I, when I see some rain is coming, I say I can, I can make it. So just concentration is done. Matt, rookie of the year last year, fastest in testing. You got pole, and it looked like you were going to have the win as well. It was going to be a dream, wasn't it? But uh, no, there you go. It, it's one of those things, obviously, it's... Um, it rained halfway through and, and being rear wheel drive it um, it hurts us more I think than, than it does in the front wheel drive. Um, at the end of the day it's, it's I think it's three points difference. Um, we've got a point for fastest lap. It's a long long championship, you know, there's twenty nine rounds to go. Um, their aim coming in, in here today was um, was obviously to take away three solid results. Um, that's the first part done, so we can tick that one off the list. And it's really moving forward into race two. Jason, congratulations, first podium of the year. Uh, yeah, thanks. I mean good 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 result for the team. I mean we've had a uh, a tricky way we're entering that we're very late with our diesel program and we I think prior to this rate race we only had like 120 miles worth of testing so really good really you know to get on the podium for first time out with the diesel is a, is a great result and a testament to the hard work the guys put putting back at the workshops now you had a bit of a clash with the teammate talk us through that nothing really to talk about I was looking where I was going and I think you drove, <laughs> drove in the back back of me I mean until we have a look at what what went on it'd be uh, unfair of me to pass comment at this stage just a little cheeky punt a little love kiss I would think <laughs> 
First race victory then for Fabrizio Giovanardi and an encouraging start to the season for Jason Plato. We'll have round two of the championship right after the break. You see. Fabrizio Giovanardi has won the first race here at Brands Hatch in the new high Q British Touring Car Championship. He'll be on pole position for round two, but carrying success ballast after his first race victory. All the action then in round two with commentary once again from Tim Harvey and Ben Edwards. So here's the grid. Giovanardi Jackson on the front row, then Plato and Turner in the Seat, followed by Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden on row number three of the grid. Behind them is Tom Onslow Cole in another Vauxhall, then Stephen Kane in the BMW, Tom Chilton, Adam Jones, Matt Allison and Rob Collard complete the top 12. Behind them, Mike Jordan and Stephen Jelly, then Andy Jordan with Jason Hughes alongside. So father and son are pretty close together on the grid. Then it's John George and Harry Volkard. Behind them, it's Eric Kutz and Colin Turkington with lots to do from 20th. Alan Taylor and Michael Doyle, then Chris Stockton and Martin Bell. And then at the back of the grid this time is Stuart Oliver in the BTC Racing Lexus. Engine revs beginning to rise, we're all set to go, lights are on, lights out, away we go, and it is a good start from Giovanardi, here comes Jackson with the BMW, it's a bit more bunched up behind with the say out of Jason Plato, Turner had a great start by Gordon Shedden there, Gordon Shedden may well have taken third, I think he has, yeah, fantastic start by the Scott in the team Alpha Tonda, up into third place, but up front it's Giovanardi leading from Jackson. All safely through Paddock Hill Bend this time, and Giovanardi did get that excellent start we knew he was capable of on a drive track but he's under pressure immediately from Jackson down the hill through Graham Hill Bend and you're right Jackson is pushing all the way along the back straight off wide has gone Turner but he's back on track and he just slots back in behind his teammate Jason Plato so far so good top three up into clearways slight lock up on the brake Giovanardi in the box hall. then Jackson on board Jackson in the BMW he led that race earlier on he had a comfortable lead before the rain came down he wants to try and take victory in the dry here Coming around to complete the lap, Giovanardi just ahead with maximum ballast, Jackson in second place. Well, last year with the West Surrey Racing BMWs, we saw they were slightly susceptible in the first couple of laps to getting their tyres under temperature. That doesn't appear to be the case with Matt Jackson. He's on it from the word go. Behind them, Plato and Turner, then Matt Neal, Stephen Kane. There's a bit of a battle going on further back, but Jackson, they're getting very close to the back of the Vauxhall Vectra. Giovanardi might be the reigning champion, but Matt Jackson wants to get past him if possible. Gordon Shedden still in third place. A little bit of an incident behind a couple of cars. Just tangling slightly, but I think they've all stayed on track. We're still riding with Jackson. Again, there's that little lock-up from both cars on the brakes. Plato through in fourth position, just easing away from his own teammate, Darren Turner. Behind him is Matt Neal and then Stephen Kane. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, sitting on the grid, I noticed that Mike Jordan was slightly out of position. I hope he doesn't get a drive-through penalty. It was way back on the grid, but he looked to be out of position. Well, that's something we'll watch for. Giovanardi controls things at the moment, but there's Jackson bobbing about in his mirrors. The youngster, Matt Jackson, who burst onto the British touring car scene last year. He's driving a car that was formerly driven by Andy Prio, the world touring car champion. Let's just take a look at that start once again there, Tim. Well, you couldn't see uh, what Mike Jordan in the background, but at the front is Giovanardi. He gets a perfect getaway, not too much wheel spin, holds the inside line, perfect start for him, and Shedden also quickly away. Yeah, that was a great start by Gordon Shedden, and that was the view off the grid as they got away. We've often seen incidents on the line here getting away off the grid, but actually that was all very clean. Colin Turkington has moved up from his rather poorly on and off, off goes Collard. No, oh. I just saw the start of that. I think that was Turkington who was behind Collard and level with Mike Jordan. Here we go. And I think that if you watch, yeah, just to touch there, similar to an incident we had last year, but Turkington just ran into the back of him. So it was a misjudgment under braking by the looks of things. And it's Collard who's ended up in the gravel trap. As a result, oh, there. Or was it Jelly? I think that may well have been Jelly. It was yes. Jelly, or Stephen Jelly, my apologies. Stephen Jelly, the man making his debut for Team RAC here this weekend. There it is again, Turkington already ahead at that point. And there off went Rob Collard, returning to British Touring Cars for a full programme this year. That's not the way he wanted to return, but he's OK. He's out of the car. We've got yellow flags at that area, and we've got the safety car on circuit. So everybody's going to be bunched up behind the safety car. And that's the first safety car of the season in British Touring Cars. This is the start from Tom Chilton's point of view, the second of the Team Halfords cars. Let's just watch what this looks like. 
Yeah, the car was just sitting on the rev limiter, wasn't it, with Wilsman? But he seemed to get it hooked up and drove away. Good start by Collard, though, wasn't it? Who then went round the outside of Paddock, which is always a brave thing to do. And up into the hairpin at Druids, Collard still stayed out wide. But that, oh, was there contact? No, they kept it clean, just about. Look how close they were. Oh, a little bit of touching and rubbing there, but nothing too out, out of control. Just typical first lap touring car action from right on board. I'm right on board the front bumper. That's fantastic. Really good to see how close they run. The safety car comes in and Giovinardi's away. Look at him already. He's opened up about three or four car lengths. How did that happen? Well, he dropped Mac Jackson there, didn't he? And Jackson's got Shedden and Plato all over the back of him. Plato challenging at the end of straight. Shedden up the inside. Can he do it? Shedden is going to try he and might take, take Plato through as well. Oh, Matt Jackson runs wide and Plato's going to try and take advantage in the sand. He's up the inside and Matt Jackson's gone from second down to fourth place. He might even lose another one here to Darren Turner. And maybe this is the tyres are not up to temperature and he is struggling a little bit on the restart. Yeah, he didn't have his tyres up to temperature. He ran wide at Paddock and uh, the others just slipped up the inside. Once he got hang up to dry, it was like a NASCAR race. He couldn't get back in line. Giovinardi's been given a good break as a result of that. Gordon Shedden now up into second place. Jason Plato in third. And now he's under pressure from Matt Jackson, who managed to stop the other Seat coming past him. But now he's really got his work cut out as a man who was potentially going to go for the win. Now he's trying to get himself back into a podium finishing position. And up front, Plato having a little look there at getting past Gordon Shedden. Yeah, I tell you what, I've seen something in this race with the, uh, the diesel there. It's very quick at the end of this straight. And this is a very short straight. When we get to places like Bruxton and Snetterton, that car is going to absolutely fly. Well, it's going to be fascinating to see how the diesel goes at all the circuits we visit this year. But still here at France Hatch for the season opener, race two, it's Giovinardi looking strong with a gap of nearly a second over Gordon Shedden. Jason Plato, the man who pushed and led the series for so much of last year until the last race of the last event. Oh, a little bit of locking up going on behind there. Tom Onslow, Cole just in, tucked in behind Matt Neal, his teammate, the two Vauxhalls absolutely together there. And they're followed by Stephen Kane and Tom Chilton in the other orange car in the middle of that group. Now we're on board with Tom Chilton, the 23-year-old from Brygate in Surrey, not far from the Brown Tap circuit. And remember, these two had a little bit of a touch in the first race when Matt Neal got past Chilton. I wonder if Chilton might return the favour in this race. He certainly came by Matt really struggling, running wide. Up to the hairpin, little lock up there again from Matt Neal. Tom Chilton not quite close enough to challenge. Tom Onslo Cole has managed to just ease away a little bit. So the 20-year-old Kingston in Surrey, very impressive in his debut for VXR in the Vauxhall Vectra. First touring car meeting in a front-wheel drive car, but showing Matt Neal the way to make this car work at the moment. And that is a, a surprise behind Matt Neal. You've got a little battle going on as Turkington gets up the inside of Stephen Kane. That was a good move up the inside into clearways. Yeah, it was. That was two BMW slugging it out. Now Jordan. Oh, oh, no! Terrible place to have an accident coming onto the straight. Maximum speed out of clearways, and that could have been much worse. Kane's car slammed into the barrier, but thankfully just rubbed along the concrete wall. Take another look at this. Well, I don't know if Stephen Kane didn't know that Jordan was there because he took the normal racing line, which is to come across close to the inside. But Jordan definitely had his inside alongside there. The contact is actually very early in the corner. And I just hope that car hasn't hit the wall too hard because that's the last thing that poor Dave Bartra wants. Oh, look where he is right on the camera almost yeah coming around this time they'll be going on to their final lap here and Fabrizio Giovinardi surely has done enough he's only got the one lap to go to record a second straight victory and what a start to his championship defense this is turning out to be I bet there won't be many uh, uh, race meetings where it's quite this straightforward but that's how it is for Giovinardi at the moment Shedden in second Plato in third and still Matt Jackson is threatening and a good drive by Tom Onslow Cole. He passed his teammate and illustrious uh, former champion Matt Neal. He's caught up behind Darren Turner. He's done a really good job in this race. Yeah, no doubt about it. But uh, look at Giovinardi. 
no problems for him at all. It was a good enough getaway by Maurizio Giovanardi. He's carried absolute maximum ballast of 45 kilograms in this race, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down at all. And it is the reigning champion, Maurizio Giovanardi, is going to make it two out of two here at Brands Hatch to take victory in the second race. Shedden takes second. Plato just holds on to third. Matt Jackson is fourth. Fifth goes to Darren Turner, then it's Otto Cole, Matt Neal in seventh, Colin Turkington takes eighth from 20th on the grid, Mike Jordan is ninth, and Adam Jones finishes in tenth place. Fabrizio Giovinardi takes his second win of the day, ahead of Gordon Shedden, Jason Plato in third, then Matt Jackson, Darren Turner in fifth place, ahead of Tom Onslow Cole, Matt Neal down in seventh, ahead of Colin Turkington, who came from 20th, Mike Jordan in ninth, and Adam Jones in tenth. Congratulations, Gordon. I know you're a very happy man, but talk us through the changes that you made because you've changed the car quite a bit for this round too, haven't you? Yeah, um, you know, the car's been okay over race distance, uh, you know, in testing, but it, it, it didn't seem to be kind of that hot over one lap. And um, we needed to find a little bit more in the early part of the race, so we, we changed, you know, quite a few things, really take a, take a big gamble on a lot of things. And uh, it seems to have paid off. I think a uh, big smile on Eddie, my engineer's <laughs> face. I think he was running out of options this weekend, so that, that's great for the team. Is there any one thing that you can really put your finger on or indeed tell us about it's just everything you know it's just that little bit here and a little bit there and uh, you know really really good to come from sixth and finish second is a, is a great bonus and uh, you know two point scoring finishes hopefully have a, a crack and run in race three and uh, pay back all the guys at team halfords that have put in all that effort over the winter to, to develop the little honda civic so uh, yeah big thank you to them gordon shedden there a fine second place after a terrific start for race three the front of the grid would be reshuffled race winner fabrizio giovanardi drew number nine uh, out of the bowl and that means that he swaps places with the man uh, in ninth place on the grid at that point that was Mike Jordan so Giovanardi drops back to ninth Mike Jordan takes over on pole position for race three which is coming up in a few minutes time Welcome back to Brands Hatch, all set for the third race in this new high Q British Touring Car Championship. Fabrizio Giovanardi has won the first two races of the day, but remember, the front of the grid is now reversed for this third race of the afternoon. Giovanardi would have started on pole, he now swaps back with Mike Jordan. Giovanardi starts from ninth on the grid, it's Jordan who starts on pole position, and Ben Edwards can take us through the full lineup. Mike Jordan's on pole position for race three. Colin Turkington in the BMW alongside. Then it's Matt Neal and Tom Onslow Cole, followed by Darren Turner and Matt Jackson. Jason Plato lines up on row four with Gordon Shedden. Behind them, we've got Fabrizio Giovinardi, double winner today, and Adam Jones. Then it's Stephen Jelly and Matt Allison. Jason Hughes is on row number seven with Andrew Jordan, followed by Harry Volkhard and Erkut. Then it's Martin Bell and Michael Doyle. John George lines up alongside Alan Taylor. We've got Tom Chilton and Stephen Kane all the way back on row 11, and then Rob Collard and Stuart Oliver. Watch that orange BMW on the right, starting in second place. That is Colin Turkington, and he could well make a rocket start. Red lights are on, lights go out, away we go, and it is Turkington. Look at this getaway, as expected, and also for Matt Jackson, a very, very fast start in the white BMW on the outside. Matt Jackson's going to try and take second into the first corner at Paddock Hill Bed, round the outside. He's gone, yes, he's up into second. What a start by both BMWs. It's Turkington leading, Jackson is second, pushed by Jordan, Jordan squeezes, hold off from one of the Seats. it's Darren Turner, Turner's off at the hairpin. Yeah, Darren Turner's miserable luck continues, he started fifth, that was his best chance for good result, the dive up the inside, I think that was Chilton, there's a bit of rubbing on the back right oh, oh, Shannon straight into, the oh, big shunt! That's a big, big accident from Tom Onslow Cole in the box hall, and that's surely going to bring the safety car out immediately. Too many cars gathered together in one section of track and the front end of that vector has been wiped out. That car's a write-off, that'll need reshelling for sure. I hope Tom's OK, he's moving in the car, so hopefully he's OK. And Well, that was Turner from the first lap skirmish at uh, Druids. We sort of predicted this could happen. Um, there was a bit of a hold-up at Druids, there was an even bigger hold-up at Graham Hill. The cars were three abreast and moving about on the bottom straight and that was the inevitable result. Well, it's been uh, pretty clean. He's out of the car, that's good news. He's stepping out of the car. Dr. Paul Trafford is down there immediately, and the medical car there to take him away to the medical centre for a, a, a checkup. Tom Onslow Cole really starred in that second race of the day here today. He finished in sixth position, his debut for Vauxhall. He raced for Team RAC in the BMW last year. 
He's driven well, but I think he was just a victim of circumstance. But we will take another look and try and work out exactly what went on there, Tim. Yeah, difficult to see quite who's who. It was a here's the start. Jackson on the outside and 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 Turkington getting excellent drives. And I didn't think at this point that um, Jackson would get around the outside, but he braves it out of Mike Jordan, gives him a lot of room at this stage. We thought he was being gentlemanly. <laughs> and this is on board with Jackson. The front wheel drive cars go to the right, the rear wheel drive car goes to the left. He's got an excellent run. And then round the outside, this is, yep, he, and he seemed to have second place, as you say here, but then there was definitely a well, bit of rubbing up the hill. He gets across in front here, but then gets a little tap, oh, there, which pushes him wide, and Jordan slips it on the inside. You can hear he goes down an extra gear. There's Mike Jordan has got the place back. Down to uh, Graham Hill. Now, this is on board Tom Chilton. Uh, he was starting a, a little bit further back, obviously, so he had a bit more to do, right at the back of the field. So uh, he had plenty to do from there. That's John George. He's trying to get past him. Michael Doyle, he's gone to the outside there as well. Yeah, everybody tends to sort of go over to the inside to block the inside. And if you're that far back, the only thing you can do is go around the outside. It's worked for Tom so far. He's continuing around the outside. Now he's dived to the inside of Urquhart. He's up behind Martin Bell. Little touch there, off exit, stage left is Darren Turner. Now let's see if we can see what's happening further in front of come down the hill. All right, dives up the inside. In front we've got... Andrew well, we can't see one of them. Yeah, we can't see, it's already happening in front. Yeah, there's the accident. You can just see the car spinning and he takes avoiding action. Bits of debris all over the place. Here we go. We might see a bit more. What happened here? Oh, Plato initially made contact with Shedden and Shedden shot into Onslow Cole. Yeah. They were trying to go three abreast there, and it just isn't the space. Plato had a good run off the corner, and I think he was almost in the process of trying to back out of it when he bashed into the back yeah, of Shedden. Yeah, he had the momentum, and I think he thought there'd be room to go up the inside, but it just ran out of room, and his touch on Shedden flicked the car. Typical front-wheel drive, no grip at the rear, just flicked the car straight into uh, into um, poor Tom Onslow Cole. I mean, ironically, that actually saved Shedden from going in the wall, but it put... Uh, it put um, Tom Onslow Cole head first into the wall. That's inside the Sayak garage. Yeah, this is uh, what they uh, are having a look at as well. This is on board with Jason from well, the start. Well, this will be very interesting. He and Turner get away very equally, again, protecting the inside. That's Gordon Shedden who gets ahead of him in the run into Paddock, as he did, of course, in race two. Now, we may see here why Turner goes off as well. Um, did Shedden get into the back of him? Yes, he did there, put the car sideways, and he goes off left. Now, is Jason thinking retaliation here? I don't think so, but uh, <laughs> now, we need to see what happens here just in front. The side-by-side -side with um, Onslow Cole, and now you can see the momentum here. He's looking for some space. He's looking for space up the inside. There's a touch there, Shedden goes sideways, flicks right, bang, into, into Onslow Cole. Well, they all slowed each other up so much. Plato had a much better run out of the corner, and he was just carrying a lot more speed. And they ran out of space to make it through three abreast down there. So very unfortunate for Tom Onslow Cole, who was completely innocent in that. Darren Turner, there, his car is being recovered. So we're going to take uh, a moment or two behind safety car here to uh, get that sorted out. Now, of course, we've got the radio link with Jason Plato here this weekend. I think we might go and ask him what went on. This is Ben to Jason. Jason, uh, what happened there? Well, we um, coming around, coming on the exit of uh, Graham Hill uh, first lap. I've got a pretty good exit in the two guys in front, which was uh, Onzo Cole and uh, and Gordon. Uh, got tangled up a bit with each other, and I uh, I kept to the left side, went, went left to try and sneak past, and it kind of all just. You know, everyone, there wasn't enough room for three cars, and Gordon kind of came over my way a little bit, and uh, we, we touched very slightly. And, uh, and then I think he was kind of sandwiched between me and um, Tom and Cole. I think that's what happened. Yeah, that was pretty much what uh, it looked like from our point of view as well. Yeah, it just uh, everything seemed to run out of space, and uh, Tom is the one that's hit the wall. How about your car? Is there any any damage to your car that you're aware of? Yeah, my, uh, my steering's uh, not quite straight. I've got a little bit of right hand down and a vibration. Um, so, so yeah, we're just wait, waiting to see uh, to see how that transpires in the race. Unfortunately, the pace at the minute on the pace car is so slow, I can't really feel how much damage there is. But uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine, I think. 
and off they go. A very good restart. So we're underway once again. And Colin Turkington takes them across the line ahead of Matt Jackson. Now watch out behind as well. Mike Jordan's going to come under some pretty severe pressure from Matt Neal right behind him in the Vauxhall. And then Jason Plato uh, trying to feel whether that Sayat is damaged or not, Plato. And right behind him, Stephen Jelly. Already they're all ganging up on one another into the hairpin of Drew. It's got some side-by-side -side action going on there. Squeezed out wide. I think Shedden on the grass. Uh, Shedden been taken out wide. Adam Jones it was that he made contact with, I'm pretty sure, as they came through the hairpin. Jones is going very slowly down the hill, but the challenge for the lead is still on. Turkington versus Jackson. Here we go, he's out on the grass. Now, he can't steer the car. It's got a mind of its own at this point. It catches the tyres, which sucks the front end in, and uh, around he goes. This might be the slowest corner on the track, but I'll tell you what, when they go off, look there, side by side, being squeezed out by Jones, squeezed out onto the grass. And even there, the minimum speed is around 45, 50 miles an hour. And when you hit the barrier on wet grass, that does a lot of damage. So Giovinardi just holding on to it at the moment. Sixth place for him. We're riding with Tom Chilton in seventh, but back with the leaders. Still very little change here. It's still Northern Irishman Colin Turkington just keeping the man from Henley and Arden, Matt Jackson behind him. But there's never really been more than about a car length. And then it's a similar gap now between Mike Jordan and Matt Neal in that race for third place. The final podium slot. Well, Mike Jordan said his aim this year is to just try and get some podium finishes in that position at the moment but he's got one of the toughest competitors behind him it's matt neal yeah matt would like to get a podium as well on his uh, debut for Vauxhall. he did of course drive for Vauxhall previously under the egg uh, sponsored team and that was the fact part of the factory team as well so he has been with triple eight before but uh, i'm sure he'd like to get a podium yes he would because the weekend started a bit in a difficult fashion for him only qualifying 10th for that first race and he's seen his new teammate Fabrizio Giovinardi take two wins already here this weekend that drops him down the points look at this very 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 close and using the grass and down here goes Matt Neal he's on the inside it's a classic Matt Neal maneuver into clearways shoving a little bit but there was just enough space well there was enough race uh, space he used a little bit of grass but as you say that is such a classic Matt Neal move he's seen it so many times over the years and really and truly if you're gonna gonna defend against Matt Neal there you need to drive on the inside line completely because if there's a slightest gap he sticks the nose in but I think Mike knows uh, fully well if Matt's committed up the inside there it's best to let him go yeah he's still very close to it though as they come through the hairpin I noticed there was nothing between them look uh, Mike Jordan has not given up on that we're looking at the race leaders there Turkington versus Jackson but if you look as they come through, look, there's nothing to choose there. And in fact, Mike Jordan, I thought for a moment, might have been nudging him round. Meanwhile, I can tell you that his son, Andy Jordan, has managed to uh, get past Stephen Jelly. Uh, those two are having quite a good race as well on the back stretch. And that's put Andrew Jordan now up into ninth place. So both of the Jordans in the points. And uh, the youngster, the 18-year-old, really getting a, a good start to his touring car career here this weekend. Over the line, another lap completed. So. We're now on lap 26, just two laps to go. There is Fabrizio Giovinardi versus Tom Chilton. Chilton having a little look down the inside. Not quite there. I wondered if he was going to try and stay with it and keep the nose alongside the Vauxhall, but it didn't happen. Behind them, it's then Matt Allison and then Andrew Jordan. So that's the... Oh, look at these two, the leaders now, with a lap and a half to go. As close as ever, lights the blaze on Matt Jackson's car. Can Colin Turkington fend him off up into clearways? Holds it tight. Jackson's looking for the better run out of the corner. But Turkington's clever, waits to get on the bar. Now he nails it. Yeah, Jackson took a wide line in, but he couldn't gain the momentum out on the outside of the corner. It was almost as though um, Turkington slightly brake-checked him just to kill his inertia. Last lap for these two who've been racing within inches of each other for the entire race distance of 27 laps and Colin Turkington has to go to the inside this time Matt Jackson will try and run around the outside but he knows that's not really possible and he could lose more time again they're virtually touching down the hill to Graham Hill Bend for the final time Turkington holds it tight this will give Jackson a better run off the corner Turkington may have to defend into the left hander at Surtees. There's one more chance to overtake, and that's into clearways coming up now. What's going to happen? Is Jackson going to go for it? He has to go to the outside. There's no space, but he's trying to go right round the outside. They are absolutely side by side off the final corner. Jackson's on the grass. He loses momentum. It's going to be Colin Turkington to win race three of Brands Hatch. Team RAC do it from Jackson in second place. Matt Neal takes third with Jordan in fourth, Jason Plato survives in fifth, Fabrizio Giovinardi takes sixth, 
then it's Tom Chilton. What a race to the flag there, Tim. That was absolutely an immense battle between these two. It was two. a fantastic battle of wits and drivers, and both of them should have full marks for not indulging in anything naughty. I mean, Jackson there tried everything, even going around the outside in the last corner, ever so brave, because certainly Turkington was going to lead on the outside. It nearly came off, but Turkington just put him on two wheels on the grass, and then he lost traction. Colin Turkington wins a dramatic race three here at Brands with Matt Jackson in second place and Matt Neal in third. Mike Jordan finished in fourth place. Jason Plato in fifth, just ahead of his great rival Fabrizio Giovinardi in sixth. Tom Chilton seventh, Matt Allison eighth. Andrew Jordan in the points in ninth place. And Stephen Jelly was tenth. And in the championship, Fabrizio Giovinardi goes away from Brands Hatch as the leader, but by only two points from Matt Jackson. Jason Plato is in third, and then there's a tie for fourth between Colin Turkington and Matt Neal, with close behind them, Gordon Shedden. Colin and Matt, congratulations on a quite outstanding race. And uh, what sort of pressure, Colin, did you feel under in that last lap? Yeah, a lot of pressure, really, the whole race. Um, I thought I could get away at the start, get a week up and uh, get my head down, but... No such luck, you know, I was under pressure that, that whole race, but uh, all credit to, to my guys at Team RAC. Uh, you know, I had a terrible start to the weekend, uh, spinning off uh, in the first race, so it was very hard work to get to get here now, but, uh, you know, I'm delighted. And Matt, did you think you had him on that last lap, especially approaching clear ways? It's always going to be tough early, obviously, uh, you know, early in the championship, but, um, you know, we've always got to keep it clean and as clean as we can and on the last lap we knew we'd got the run through Colin through Surtees and on the brakes into clearways and for sure he was going to defend and uh, he did and I thought okay well let's try around the outside and hopefully we can uh, we can get enough momentum to get past but um, you can see there we're around the outside now we've gone for the move thought, okay let's hold it in there but um, Colin did exactly what uh, what I expected him to do really and that was roll the car out and uh, you know in a situation like that I think. And Matt you might have felt you were on for victory in that first race uh, it wasn't to be how would you sum up the start you've made in the championship? Yeah, I think it's been good obviously we had a really good uh, qualifying on on Saturday we put it on pole position which was um, which was a great result for the team and uh, the sponsor accident exchange it was um, it, you know it was a fantastic uh, start to the weekend. Um, race one didn't quite fall our way. We got the lead over Fabrizio, and then uh, the rain came. And um, I'm sure Colin will vouch for it. But rear-wheel drive in the rain is. Um well, you've made a great start on behalf of the championship because that was racing of the absolute highest quality. Well done, fellas. Congratulations on the win, Colin. And uh, let's get more reaction now from Matt Neal, I believe, who's with Janie. He certainly is with a well-deserved podium. Well done. Um, I gather that was a very clean, fair, but very Matt Neal move. Aren't I always clean? Oh, I suppose not. <laughs> but you talk to other people. No, it's, I could see Mike was struggling a little bit up into uh, clearways, just through the kidney up into clearways. It was my one chance, so yeah, I know the car pretty well. So if I, <laughs> I could just get my nose along the inside, we could uh, have a chance, and it worked. I've got to pick you up on that. You know the car pretty well. Explain why. It was my championship-winning car yeah. from a couple of years back, and um, uh, Jordan's put it to pretty good use, and it's a, it's a tough customer to get past for, uh, with either of them. So, um, yeah, it was very satisfying. Well, in terms of action and excitement, it's been a quite outstanding start to the new British Touring Car Championship season here at Brands Hatch. Next live action will be at Rockingham in two weeks' time. Of course, we'll have full live coverage here on ITV4. But after all the drama and incident and outstanding racing we've had at Brands Hatch today, it's still the defending champion, Fabrizio Giovinardi, out in front. He's made the perfect start to the defence of his British Touring Car Championship title. Goodbye. Thank you.